Welcome to another VSG Expanded video. This video is a companion to the EdgeConnect SD-WAN Overlay Design Chapter in the Validated Solution Guide. You can read this chapter in the VSG, as well as other great content by following the link in the description below. This video discusses how to design SD-WAN business intent overlays using EdgeConnect SD-WAN to connect your campus, branch, cloud, and data center networks. Let's get started. In the EdgeConnect SD-WAN solution, the business intent overlay defines policy which provides certain treatment for a given set of traffic. Here on my screen, we have a BIO configuration that we will use to go through the components of the BIO and discuss how it can impact the overlay design. When traffic enters an Edge Connect SD-WAN gateway, it will match a BIO if it's destined for a WAN interface. So the BIOs are assessed in priority order. So it'll look at BIO one, then two, then three to try and match the traffic into a specific business intent overlay. The design recommendation here would be to make sure that your most granular BIOs are at the top and your more broad BIOs, like your default BIOs, are towards the bottom. It'll then use the overlay ACL to match the specific traffic. It then looks at if the traffic is destined for an internal subnet or an external subnet. Internal subnets are things like other branches, data centers, uh, hubs. Those are generally matched by the RFC 1918 prefix space here. Or if the traffic's being broken out to the internet, or a cloud service. It'll treat the traffic differently depending on if it's meant for an internal destination or an external definition. So let's dive into a BIO here. If we look at the components of the BIO, the first thing is the match criteria. This determines what traffic will go into this BIO. This is generally done with an overlay ACL, but you can also do things like match on a port or an appliance ACL, but overlay ACL is the recommended method to match traffic to a BIO. Then you can match based on a plethora of options. Commonly, we'll see things like DSCP values or application types with our application recognition engine. You can see we can match specific applications or groups of applications. There are multiple other ways to match traffic as well. If we look here at more options, we can see we can do things like Aruba user roles or specific domains or geolocations. Next, there's the topology. This defines the meshiness of your IPsec tunnels, which we use to establish our underlay. This helps with scalability. So for BIOs where we want uh, direct traffic or the most efficient flow of traffic, like real time, we'd want a full mesh topology. For things that don't require full mesh, where hub and spoke may be okay, like sending print jobs or bulk data, we'd want to look at a topology like hub and spoke. This is really important when you consider the scalability and the number of IPsec tunnels that your SD-WAN gateway can support. We can also regionalize our meshiness so we can have full mesh within a given region, like the, the United States region or the, the West Coast region, and then have hub and spoke between our regions to accomplish scalability. When we look at the interfaces available, the WAN interfaces that we have, we have labels on each WAN interface. We can decide for this given BIO what labels or what WAN interfaces we want to use to build our BIOs over. We can set primary interfaces, so it'll build tunnels and do probing over both these interfaces, or we can set backup interfaces, which is generally used when you have uh, a metered circuit, something like LTE. This cross-connect group is used when you have labels that have connectivity between them, which is very common for internet circuits. I may have an internet circuit from provider A, which I give the label INET1, and an internet circuit from provider B, which I give the label INET2, and I, those can build tunnels between them because there's meshiness between internet providers. If I have an MPLS provider, there would be no connectivity generally between one MPLS cloud and another. That's where the cross-connect groups come in. Generally, you want to use all of your available interfaces in the primary group, unless that transport type has some metering on it, like LTE. Next is the SLO, or service level agreement. This dictates what it means for the BIO to be healthy. So we have loss, latency, and jitter that we can set thresholds on. And when we go above those thresholds, we'll start moving traffic to different interfaces to try to meet that BIO standard. So if our internet one label is not performing, we'll start to move traffic to the MPLS label to try and meet that SLO and keep the BIO healthy. Next, there's the link bonding policies. This defines how we use our WAN transports. The most commonly used are high availability and high quality. High availability is generally recommended for applications like voice where there's very little tolerance to loss. The downside with the high availability link bonding policy is that it has 50% bandwidth efficiency because we're sending a, another copy of the packet down an alternate path. High quality, on the other hand, will 
uh, only kick in with some packet duplication when it sees loss on the network, and you'll have more efficient use of your bandwidth while still maintaining the ability to have SLOs attached to your application. High quality is generally used for most transport types where high availability is only used for voice transport. Other items that are relevant to the BIO are things like applying boost to your traffic, traffic classes for internal QoS inside the Edge Connect, and then how we want to accept and remark traffic as it goes between the LAN and the WAN. Now, if we look at traffic destined to internet services, you see that this is a bit more simplistic. There's less we can do when there's not an Edge Connect on the other side. So if we have traffic destined to the internet, we can decide how we want to send that traffic to the internet. We can do things like break it out locally, where we use our on-box zone-based firewall and then send it locally to the internet. We can backhaul it to one of our hubs, or we can do things like send it to a SSE provider like Access Security, Netscope, Zscaler, and we can uh, set that order based on our uh, business policy. We can then decide what internet circuits we want to use to break out that traffic or tunnel that traffic. If we have multiple internet circuits, we could see that here. We could also use LTE in a backup scenario. And then we can decide how we want to use our multiple circuits. If we have more than one internet egress point, how do we want to utilize those circuits between a waterfall where we fill up one circuit and then go to the next, or more of a balanced approach. Now that we've learned about the BIOs, let's summarize some best practices. Use as few BIOs as possible to accomplish your ideal traffic treatment. The system supports up to seven BIOs, and if you need more than that, you're probably doing something wrong. You should use a different BIO when you need things like a different SLO, a different bonding policy, or even a different internet egress policy. When you consider the meshiness of your topology, only use full mesh when you really need to, like in a real-time environment where you want your voice calls to go direct. Consider leveraging hub and spoke where you don't need the most direct traffic flows, as full mesh does consume more resources of the gateway, creating more IPsec tunnels. When you think about your service level agreements on any given BIO, don't tune these numbers too low. When they're too low, interfaces will be prematurely removed from usage, and that actually can have a negative impact on the end user experience because you'll be removing interfaces unnecessarily. Consult the VSG for the most updated recommendations on service level objective numbers. Lastly, when you're thinking about your internet breakout, try to move to a model that has either local breakout or move to an SSE approach for security. Backhauling is a great last resort, but it's a poor end user experience having to utilize your WAN bandwidth to transport internet traffic to a centralized location, and you'll generally be breaking geolocated DNS, sending the users to an unideal location. That was a quick look at the key components of business intent overlays and some design considerations. This information should arm you with what you need to get out there and start deploying overlays in Edge Connect SD-WAN. For more SD-WAN design guidance, as well as other great design, deploy, and operate content, check out the Validate Solution Guide linked in the description.